Welcome back to Northern Exotics. In this video, we're gonna show you how to make amazing little feeding ledges for your crested gecko. So while we're in isolation, it's always worth just keeping yourself busy, keep yourself occupied, occupying your mind. You may as well do something productive, mightn't you? So we're gonna show you how to make these little feeding ledges. Now these ledges are the sort that go onto the side of the little enclosures and they can come in and eat and stuff like that. Me personally, I don't have a crested gecko. I'm gonna be making this for my morning gecko babies. As you can tell, there's one in this enclosure just now and he absolutely loves it, the baby that's in there. So we're gonna do that. The same principle works perfectly fine for crested geckos and for any sort of arboreal lizard that eats out of a ledge like this. So we're gonna, as you can tell with this one, it's got a lovely little hole there. So we've got a little tub to put in there, put the Pangea and the crested gecko diet in there. And it just looks massively natural and it's just perfect. I've been using this exact thing for around about four months now and it works absolutely perfect for me. I've never had a problem with it. And um, yeah, this is how to make it. First off, what are you gonna need? We're gonna need some sort of polystyrene. I think in America, you guys call it styrofoam. Now, the thickness is quite important for me making the morning gecko enclosure, I don't need it too thick. If you're using crested gecko, you might want to make it a little bit thicker just to make it that a little bit more sturdier. And you always get one flat side on it. You want to keep that flat side there so that it can stick to the side of the enclosures. You don't want to make it too wide. If you've got a deep enclosure, you can make it as wide as you want. Me personally, I'm not going to make it too wide because it's only going in these little tubs. Now these little tubs are what I use for my baby morning geckos every time they hatch. Uh, they come into one of these little containers and they're just absolutely amazing. Let me show you one without a baby in it so that I don't take the lid off. But yeah, these enclosures, check them out. We've got a vented lid on the top, uh, live planted inside, substrate. It's got a little bit of a clean up crew inside there. This one hasn't got a ledge in it just yet, which is the one I'm making right now. If you want to see how to make one of these enclosures, I will be doing a video about it. So make sure you do hit subscribe and all that sort of stuff. But also, Clint's Reptiles, a good friend of mine, he uploaded a video making one of these. If you want to see that video, I'll link it just up there. But on this channel, we do an awful lot of little crafty DIY and life hacks, just like this amazing little water bowl with a live plants and stuff. That's going to go into a bioactive leopard gecko enclosure. But let's move on direct to this thing. What are you going to need? You're going to need a piece of polystyrene. You're going to need a lighter. You're going to need something to make a hole. I'm going to use this spoon. I'm going to heat the end up and use the spoon. Um, you're going to need the container that you're going to use for your Crested Gecko diet. For me, I'm going to be using these tattoo ink cups. And simply, you can pick up a bag of these, 50 of these, for like a couple of quid on uh, Amazon. If you want to go and have a check it out, there's links in the description down below to my Amazon store and they'll all be in there, along with the Crested Gecko diet that I'm actually going to be using. You, the paint that you're going to need, you're going to need acrylic paint because acrylic paint is waterproof, basically. It won't, when you're misting your enclosure down, it won't damage the paint that's on there and the paint's not toxic so it won't go through to your animals and just, the, acrylic is the best to use, it's non-toxic and blah de blah So how do you do it to start with? Remember, you need to keep the flat side absolutely perfect. So you want to make it the size you want. And the joy with this is it can get messy, so make sure you've got yourself a bucket of some description but you can make it however you want. That is the joy with it. You wanna sort of make it a little bit bigger than you actually need. So for me, I'm just gonna literally cut it off there, just like that. So as you can tell, I've got my flat side and my rounded side. I want to make the hole in the top. So how do we do that? Well, that's quite easily. I've got my spoon. It's exactly the same size as the large tattoo ink cups that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna heat that up, whack it into the actual polystyrene, move it around a little bit, twist it around so it makes the whole absolute perfect. Keep trying the actual ink cup just to see if it fits in there nice and flush because you really do want it to sit in nicely and nice and flush. Whatever container you're actually using, so if you're using a bigger lid or something, just make sure your polystyrene is actually bigger, deeper than your actual container and just go from there. It's dead easy, you don't want to go all the way through. If you do go all the way through, it's okay because the piece we broke off, we can use that. It's, that's how easy it is, and this is just waste poly This is just waste polystyrene, and it can really use. A good top tip, when you are heating something up like this, 
be careful, it is fire, it is hot. Use the very top of the flame to actually heat it up because that's the best way to do it. It's the hottest part to do it and it just won't heat up your hand as much. Just take it nice and easy. The, it doesn't need to be glowing hot or anything like that. It just needs to go in nicely just like that. And it just sinks in and twists around and boom. Now let's try it. We get our tattoo ink cup and we put it in. Now I need to go a little bit deeper. So I just heat it up again. Mainly heat up the edges because that's the part that I want the deepest. And we just go in very gently. If you are a child or a kid, make sure you have adult supervision for doing this. Boom. That'll do me. Fits in nicely. Absolutely perfect. Don't just put your hot spoon down on anything. Make sure the edge is hanging off so it just doesn't burn the surface that you're working on. The next job right now, we've got it. It's got the hole in it. It's got the ink cup in it is we've got to make the rock surface. Now the way I do it, do you, remember, do you remember these back when there was no isolation? The McDonald's stirrers. I stab it in the flat side, just there, not too far, not all the way through to the actual ink cup, just a little bit. Lo and behold, that went all the way through to the ink cup. Doesn't matter, but I've got that like that. And I'm gonna get my lighter. This is the reason why you needed to make it a little bit bigger than you actually needed. So you can do whatever you want. All you've got to remember is this flat side you have to keep flat and you've got to be very very quick with this because it's hot it will melt very quickly but let's have a go at this side just oof, rock surface instant rock surface same on this side oof, rock surface you see all the little white bubbly things i don't know how well you can actually see it but that's the sort of stuff you want out of the way this seals it oh there we go it just seals it all in nicely. It gives it that rock effect. Now I've done the edges, as you can tell. Now you can do it a bit more. You can take this corner off, just nice and gently, just like that. If it does catch light, just like that, just buff, tap it, done, perfect. You don't want too many sharp edges. You don't want it to be really, oh, you don't want it to be really smooth and lined up and everything, so I mean, just have a play that's all you've got to do oh, there we go just have a play a little rock surface there got bubbles on the, the end it's just nice and solid work on this side because it's there's a bit of a ledge on this side which i don't want oh there we go just, that's it it's just dabbing it however you feel you want it oh, oh, oh. and so we've got all the sides are done perfectly now we've got to do the top because again the top you don't need to look dead flat and just nah, inside your enclosure but you want to be careful because as you're going to heat it up it's going to shrink the size of the actual polystyrene so you've already measured up to see if that fits in you don't want to shrink it too much where, to where that doesn't fit in again so you just want to be very very quick just very quick passes i stick it on an angle like that heat rises so if you've got it like that it's going to rise and it's going to blow off a bit more so I just stick it like that and just, boom, quick run, quick run, quick run, done. Absolutely perfect. Little rock effect. I want to get that corner off because that's just annoying me a bit. Oof. And that one, just there. Oof. So there is absolutely perfect. You can do the bottom as well if you want. If you want to do the bottom, you can do the bottom. We may as well just very, very quickly. Oof, and take that corner off because that looks ugly as hell. Oof. So that's that done. Absolutely perfect. What you want to do next is we're going to get onto the paint. So leave the stick in. It just helps you with the paint. Do, 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 do. Get yourself another piece of polystyrene. So when you've painted it, you can just stab it in and just let it dry like that. Absolutely perfect. Hopefully it doesn't fall over like that. Next job right now is to paint it. Now, that takes ages. You can paint it as however you want to paint it. If you're doing a naturalistic enclosure, you can do something more natural colours. If you're doing a themed enclosure, you can do a theme coloured thing. It's totally up to you, as and when you please. For me, I just went flat out, standard, this colour. Now, I, will, as I say this colour, I don't know the exact colour, simply because I'm colour blind. I'm, yeah, 
I'm just one of them. Let me know in the comments below if you guys ever make anything like this and all this sort of stuff. But now, the big question is, how do you secure this? You've got to leave it to dry for around about 24 hours. But how do you secure this into the actual enclosures? Now, I'm using a plastic enclosure. You, there's so many ways you can do it. You can basically insert little tiny magnets in there and stick it inside, stick some magnets on the outside, jobs are good. And you can glue them in there. That, that looks pretty good to be fair. But me, I want this in there permanently. I want it to be solid in there. And there's loads of ways you can do it. For me, I'm gonna use a hot glue gun. Now, there are some tricks and tips because hot glue gun, it'll melt the polystyrene. Not the way I do it. So the way to do it is you put your hot glue gun and you plug it in. You want to keep very close eye on this because you don't want it to get as hot as what a hot glue gun would get. You pick the enclosure that you're going to actually stick it in. For me, I'm going to stick it in this one simply because the plant life in there has grown quite well. And if you have kept up with this channel, we've actually got more morning gecko eggs. So that they're going to be hatching soon. So I really do have to work on these, get these up and running quite well. But that is just a morning gecko enclosure. I'm going to take the lid off and I'm going to figure out where I want this to go because it is quite important. I want one solid flat surface to have a bit of heat on it. So I don't want the feeding ledge to go next to the heat because all the crested gecko diet will just evaporate into midair. So I'm going to basically get that so that it's warm enough to melt the glue stick but not warm enough to melt the polystyrene. So it's just gonna sit there with my hand on the trigger and when it starts to come out, pour it all onto the edge, the flat edge, get it stuck on as quick as possible. Add some pressure for a minute or two, just until it sets nicely. And then just let it go and that's it. Basically, that is it done. Let's have a go. You can see it's starting to come out ever so slowly, only little bits. And as soon as it starts to come out, really start to push on it and get loads out. Because like I say, you do not want it to be too hot. If it's hot as it would normally get to, that's too hot. That will melt the actual polystyrene and the plastic container that I'm going on. Absolutely, right, there. So, boof, got loads on, got the enclosure, stick it in, and boof, proper push it on. Perfect, that is the feeding ledge in there. You can see how it's all crushed in nicely. And yeah, that is it. So we know, now we can mix up our Crested Gecko Diet, pour it into the actual little ink cups, get some tweezers and just drop it straight in that hole. Perfect. When it comes around to changing it, just stick some tongs in, pick it up, out it goes. Now, when I've got any leftovers, I just chuck it in with my mealworm breeding farm or my superworm breeding farm. That does absolutely perfect for me. But that is how I do these feeding ledges. You can use them for crested geckos, morning geckos, basically anything that eats out of these little tubs. Hope you've enjoyed that, guys. If you have, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you're new around here, why not subscribe? We have loads of videos just like this that are going to benefit you through this whole lockdown isolation period.